Now, let us have a review of our last week topic, which is on the education benefits and wastages. Last week, we saw the type of benefits we can enjoy from education and the wastages that could come with it. So we have learned how we can control such wastages. But before we get along, let's see if we have any question from any of us. The floor is open for questions. Okay, thank you. You can put your question on the chat board where we're going to respond to it. Now let's continue. The focus for this week is by the end of this week, you will be able to analyze and plan for the supply of education that will meet the demand. We have the demand for education, but how do we plan the supply for education? Without what we, like I've always told us, is heavy, you will be able to attend to the demand for education. Now, how will you plan for the supply of education to meet education demand? First and foremost, you need to find out the type of demand that is required. In this case, you look at the level of demand. Is it at the pre-primary school, primary school level, secondary school level, or post-secondary school level? Then you look at the skills where education is being demanded. Because most times we find ourselves putting attention into skills that are not really required and ignoring the skills that are required. So it is important for us to be able to capture where the skills are required, the levels where those skills are required, and the particular geographical location where those skills are required. This will help us to determine the exact type of institution that we need to put in place. And when you are able to come up with that institution, the next thing for us to plan for is the curriculum. What type of knowledge do we want them to acquire? And that will get us to conceptualizing what we need to do. It is not always being nice for us going up to just import what is being done elsewhere. It is good for us to look inward, to be able to provide education that will meet the need of the learners, the need of the society, and in general, the need of the economy. Now, one could say, well, you like uh, last week when we were looking at the benefits, is you go to school, you're bound to have a better job that will give you a higher wage. But sometimes you do not follow with what we have now. And the question is, why is it that we are not getting it that way the way it ought to be. Probably because the supply of education was wrongly done. And if that happens, you discover that we will not be able to have an adequate education to match the demand that is required. Why you, before you start planning for education, first and foremost, you must know the needs, you must know the uh, area where such need is required, and you must be able to know what you need to supply to meet such demand. In the area of infrastructure, in the area of facilities, in the area of resources, both human and non-human resources, this will help you supply a better education. And it is not always good enough to have education that do not have a good supply. Now the next question is, what are the guiding variables when planning supply for social demand education? You know, when you talk about social demand education, you are saying provide education for everyone. Everyone should go to school. Yes, it is a nice idea because you feel one of the benefits of education is that if everyone is educated, then you will have less poverty. But however, when you want to provide this education, remember at different level, you have different needs of supply that you're going to provide in this various education. Yes, at the pre-primary level and primary level, it is easier to have the social demand approach to providing education. So when you are going to have variables, when planning supply for social demand approach, first and foremost, you must look at the age that fall into the group of people you want to provide education for. You must also look at their needs of the type of education they require. You must look at their environment because the environment will determine 
the type of curriculum you're going to put in place to help them meet their needs. Then you must be able to look at their social status too. Because if you look at the environment and within the environment there is hunger. If you are bringing education, they may not easily embrace education. So how do you solve that? It means there must equally be policy to capture the hunger aspects. Now, with this, we're going to have our revision for this course. And like I told us, this is the last week for this course. And for us to have our revision, I want you to ask your questions in all the areas we have dealt with in economies of education. And our revision, like I sent to you on the message I forwarded to you, we're going to have it on the chat box. So I want you between 4 to 5 p.m. on Friday, log on to your course page, go to the chat box, uh, type in your question, and I will be there to respond to you. So with this, we have come to the end of the course. And I want you to put into practice everything you have learned in the economics of education, to really put into practice to improve the quality of education. And on the other hand, that will impact the society. I wish you the best as you keep on applying what you have learned.